The original Game Boy Advance is no stranger to amazing backlight kits that drastically improve the user experience. At this point, these kits are pretty much perfect, with minimal issues if any. Due to the maturity of these mods, the engineers of these kits have started to add some more features. One of the latest IPS kits available now incorporates an AV composite out so you can output your Game Boy Advance video to an external monitor, which is absolutely amazing. Let's take a closer look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we're going to be taking a look at yet another IPS kit for the original Game Boy Advance. But as always, there's a twist. This particular kit is unique in that it integrates a video out function so you can play your Game Boy Advance games on a television screen directly from the GBA console itself. And the part that's even more awesome is the fact that the video out is done through the existing link port at the top of the console. So there won't be any need for trimming the shell to put an extra port on the system, which is absolutely awesome. Now this kit along with the funny playing shell and some components were sent my way from Retro Game Repair Shop free of charge. But rest assured, I'm going to be putting this kit through its paces to give you my honest opinion. So big thank you to Retro Game Repair Shop. To start this episode off, I'll briefly be going over the parts included in this unique IPS kit, as well as some of the other items I'll be using for this build. Then I'll show you how to install it, discuss the key features of the mod, go over the pros and cons, and of course end things by providing you with my overall thoughts. So my donor console for this install is this silver Game Boy Advance. While not very noticeable on camera, it appears the LCD has some mild discoloration, most likely caused by overexposure to UV light. However, with the new IPS kit we'll be installing, this console will be better than new. Now included in the IPS kit is of course the LCD panel itself. One of the nice things about this particular panel is that it's manufactured by LG, which theoretically is higher quality and produces a better color temperature. Here's the driver board, which has the integrated AV out feature. Amazing that so much is incorporated into this small PCB. To connect the IPS panel to the driver board, the kit also includes a 32 and 40 pin ribbon cable. So this kit is compatible with every single AGB001 console. And these are some acrylic spacers, which I actually won't be needing because I'll be using this IPS ready funny playing shell, which really should help make this installation significantly easier. Another notable item in this kit is the special AV cable, which has a link port connector and headphone jack on one end and your RCA terminals on the other. The last few items included in the kit are some wires to make all the necessary connections, some insulating film, and a foam gasket which I won't be using since it doesn't appear to be compatible with the funny playing shell. Great, that just about covers everything. So without any further ado, let's start this project. Okay, you all know the drill. First thing we gotta do is tear down this GBA. Since we'll be using an all new shell and buttons, all we'll need from this donor console is the motherboard. After removing the shell, unfasten the screws securing the motherboard. Delatch the bales on the ribbon cable connector and then remove it. With the motherboard free, go ahead and lift it out. Now moving our attention to the IPS panel, let's go ahead and apply the insulating film to the rear. Great, now let's prep the driver board. Pre-tin all five pads shown here. Then solder each of the included wires to each pad. And this is what it should look like. Now we need to do a bit of trimming to the shell to get everything to fit. Please note this is a funny playing IPS ready shell, but we still need to do some modifying. With some flush cutters, trim the areas shown here. And this is what it should look like. Now go ahead and connect the IPS panel to the driver board like so. Then peel the protective film 
and drop it into the front shell. Reapply the film to protect the screen during the rest of the installation process. I added some Kapton tape here to keep the driver board in place. Now go ahead and install both touch sensors. I place them towards the bottom of the front shell housing. And this is what it should look like. After determining which ribbon cable you need, go ahead and install it into the motherboard. Mine happens to be a 32 pin connector. Then insert the other side into the driver board as shown. Now comes some more soldering. Pretend the test pad labeled TP9 and then solder the wire for the L trigger to it. Then pretend the pad labeled TP2 and solder the select wire to it. And then do the same for test pad TP8 and solder the R trigger wire to it. And this is how everything should look. Now with a permanent marker, go ahead and color the ground wire. This way we can visually see the difference between the ground and AV composite wire since the driver board will be covered and we'll have no way of telling which is which. Before moving on, go ahead and install the buttons and membranes. Then carefully place the motherboard into the front shell, being cognizant of the two remaining wires that we need to solder. Once in place, secure the motherboard with the three Phillips screws. And now add some fresh solder to the ground pin as well as pin three shown here. Take the ground wire, which we colored with our marker, and solder it to the ground pin. Then solder the AV composite wire to pin three, which is the center pin on the bottom row. And this is what it should look like. With all the soldering complete, go ahead and install the L and R triggers and then button up the console. Remove the protective film and then install the glass screen lens. And then finish things off by applying the rear label. Install some fresh batteries and you're done. Fantastic. I have to say, this is a pretty impressive piece of kit. I absolutely love how seamlessly the AV out capability has been integrated into the existing link port. It's such an ingenious solution. Paired with the funny playing shell, the installation was both made significantly easier and I think it looks pretty neat. So let's quickly go over the features of this kit. Let's start by going over the IPS portion first. Like most kits, this has brightness control, which can either be operated by holding the select button and then tapping the L and R triggers, or you can utilize the touch sensor. There appears to be nine levels of brightness in total. By tapping the color palette sensor, you can run through the various integrated palettes. I don't find this feature particularly useful, but I'm assuming this is primarily intended for playing original black and white Game Boy games. And of course, the last and most important feature is the video out function. For this demonstration, I have the Game Boy Advance connected to my RetroTank 2X Pro and then to my Elgato HD60 capture card. To activate video out, simply press and hold select, L and R together for about five seconds. And there it is, video out. Now, since this is being output via composite, the video quality isn't the greatest. However, for being a composite signal, I think it's more than usable. So for you to gauge the quality of the video and sound, I'll play some of the opening sequence to Wario Land 4. Hopefully this will give you a good idea of the quality. So I have to say, this is a pretty awesome feature and I can definitely see some folks really being interested in having this kind of capability. With that, let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, first and foremost, the IPS screen quality is amazing. I think it's safe to say that these kits have really reached a point where they all just look fantastic. Now, as I mentioned previously, this particular kit comes with an LG panel, which I am told produces a better color temperature than other units. In my opinion, it's hard for me to tell the difference, but the image quality does look superb. 
It's also great that this kit comes with both the 32 and 40 pin ribbon cable, so you don't need to worry about compatibility. Now let's talk about the AV out features. One of the things I was worried about was potential input lag. However, there is no issue with that whatsoever. Everything is snappy and the controls work perfectly. As for the video out quality, I think it's really what you would expect for a composite signal. It's certainly more than adequate for playing on the television if that's your goal. I wish I had a Game Boy player for the GameCube to compare, but unfortunately I don't at the moment. It would be really interesting to see a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. And the last pro, in my opinion, is price. At $70, it's only about 10 more bucks than your average IPS kit. So essentially, you're paying about $10 for the ability to output composite video, which I think, if it's an important feature for you, is certainly a bargain. And now, let's get into the cons. And to be absolutely honest, there really aren't many. The first con I could think of is that this kit does require some fine soldering. Soldering to the small vias can be challenging to those who are inexperienced. Beyond that, if you're using an IPS ready shell, you fortunately won't need to do much trimming, which is always welcome. Now the last thing I want to mention is compatibility of link port accessories. At the moment, Retro Game Repair Shop can only confirm that the wireless adapter works. However, it appears as though my revision of the mod in this video does not work with the link cable. I'll pin a comment to this video once I have a full list of compatible link port accessories. So there you have it, a new IPS solution with video out functionality for the original Game Boy Advance. As always, I'm curious about what you all think of this kit. What would your particular use case be for a mod like this? Would you use it to capture game footage? With several ways to play Game Boy Advance games on the TV, do you see this as a viable alternative? Definitely let me know by leaving a comment down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.